Hey guys, what's up? It's Blue Turner here coming to you with a tutorial. Well, three music producer tips. Three very unconventional music producer tips. Because I will be going over the EQ of your lead sound, the low bass, I mean, in, the, in, that, uh, in that sound. Now you may think like low bass, what the fuck? Lead sound, low bass, what do you mean? Okay. The, the second tip will be about the lead sound. How do you make a fuller lead? And the third tip will be about the effects in the VSTs itself. So not on your bus. Let's listen to the first one for the EQ tip. So you hear that this is quite a nice lead sound, you know. But it has a lot of it, it has a lot of frequency space in it if you go and look at the frequency range of of this lead instrument then you will see that it actually goes over the whole frequency space you see it also goes into the bass range and if you want to make a full package in your track you practically only need only want the bass sound in your bass range and you don't really want any other sounds because it will clutter up the bass. So if we actually cut off, because that's the most logical thing to do, if you cut off the lower frequencies, this is what will happen. Your lead sound will sound very light, very dull, your ear doesn't really know what to listen to, and that's because I've cut off the root note. Now what is the root note? The root note is actually the, the note in the sound in your instrument that your ear listens to that your ear will follow so if i cut out the the root note that means that my ear will not really listen to the lead sound anymore it will be there but it isn't the main subject of your track and you really want it to keep the main subject of the of the track now if i had to guess the root sound will be somewhere around here so let's listen again and again <laughs> Yeah, so the, the root sound still is in the bass range, around here somewhere. And if you cut that off, you, you, know what, you know what will happen. It will sound dull. So what we want to do is find a midway. And the midway is to cut off a little bit of the volume right here. Now you still, you still, it is still audible. It is still... The main sound in your lead, it's, it's still there, but it's lower volume. And what does this mean? This means that your bass can fill in better. Now, if you want to be, have, a, have a perfect lead, like in my opinion, you shouldn't really have any bass, bass root note. Your root note should be somewhere around here most of the time. But with a lot of with a lot of lead sounds, you usually have your root note in the bass range. Yeah, and this is because this is because yeah, you know, I I, I mean this tip is about EQing, so there are a lot of other factors out there. But what I used to do a long time ago was just cut out all of this. All of these frequencies and the root note, and wonder why my lead wasn't really full, why my well, why my lead wasn't sticking out, and that actually make brings us to the second to the second tip, which is the lead tip. Okay, let's listen to it. Now what you hear is that the lead doesn't sound full. So how am I going to make the lead sound sound fuller? And this is one tip I will give you. The second tip is to make layers. Now you heard this a lot of times before, but how do you actually make layers? I see, I see producers make the mistake of having one sound, like they want to make this one sound their lead sound, the sound that will uh, catch the listener's ear in the drop. But how are we going to make that full? And I see a lot of producers make the mistake of picking the wrong layers, like picking the wrong second sound let's listen to the let, let's listen to a a mistake i hear like in the instrument so if you're kind of an intermediate like 
longer time producer, you can already hear the mistake here. It doesn't sound anything like the first layer. And not necessarily, that's not a mistake necessarily, but if you want to make one, one lead sound that catches your, your ear, you want to make a similar sound to the other layers that you already have. Okay, so this was our first layer. Okay, we want to make it fuller, so we add a second layer that's kind of similar, but not the same. So you can already hear that this lead sound sounds sounds a lot more similar to the first layer, to the, to the sound you want to have as your main sound. So if you play that together, you will hear that the lead sound will actually sound very full. Now imagine if you have some kind of hyper saw in there as well. You already have three layers and the lead sound will sound a lot fuller as it is. But let's listen to it with the wrong layer that I just mentioned. And you will hear that the sound is, is pretty overtaken by this new sound. That's not at all similar to the other sounds. You hear that? So... Okay guys, before you start raging in the comments, I'm not saying this is a mistake. If you really want this sound in your track, you can still use it. If it sounds good to you, you should use it, okay? That's, that's always been something I hammer on. Like, if it sounds good to you, then should, you should definitely use it. But this is a tip I will give you because a lot of producers want one lead sound, uh, one lead sound that stands out. You don't want too many instruments playing the lead sound that are different. Because your, 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 listeners, your listeners ears, your fan ears, don't know what instrument to listen to. Will they listen to the lower frequency uh, kind of gong sound that I made here? Or will they listen to the lead sound that you want as your lead right here? So that is one tip I will give you. And what I see with this wrong instrument going on is to make some kind of attack, attack uh, heightener. Like you make the notes very short. This is oh, secret, secret producer tip. Like you use that wrong sound to make the attack of the lead sounds you made, like these layers make it stand out more, so your lead sound will even stand out more. Let's listen to it right now. So there's still tweaking to do, but you can already hear that it's starting to, to glide into with the lead sounds, to, to, to stick with the lead sounds that it, that it starts to fit. There's still EQ work to do and effects and blah, 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 blah. But you know, you can already hear that it's starting to fit. Okay. So let's move on to the third tip, the effects in the VSTs. Now, I also see a lot of producers make this mistake that they try and make something in the master bus, uh, in the bus of the mixer work with the effects already playing in the VSTs. So what do I mean? Like you have, a, you have a phaser here and you have the chorus here and your delay and your reverb here. And this is all playing in the VST by itself. So if you play the sound, you can re-hear the delay and the reverb. You hear the delay and the reverb. So what happens if we add a, let's say a camel crusher in here, like, like a distortion plug. And what will happen? What do you think will happen? Okay, let's play it. Okay, so so rip rip headphone users, but um, you heard what happened. What happens is actually the, the VST with the full effects moves to the master bus. So all these effects and the instrument playing will move to the master bus. The reverb, the delay, the chorus will all move to the master bus. It will first move to your EQ. Okay, that's the wrong EQ. This is the right EQ. It will first move into your EQ, where it will EQ the sound. Then it will move to your other effects VSTs, which in this case is the Camel Crusher. 
And this camel crusher will also crush the reverb and the delays in your VST. Okay? And that will make that horrendous sound. So what you want to do, well most of the time when you want to put like a distortion plug in or anything else like a saturator or something on the on the mixer bus, what I always do is I mute or turn off the effects in the in the VST itself and just start to ramble around in here because I cannot change I well I don't know if it is possible but I'm not sure I don't think it is possible but the the effects will play to the to the bus before it before it enters your ears so what will happen right now is you only hear the camel crusher and not the uh, reverbed camel crush distortion shit going on in the instrument <laughs> So how are we going to make the reverb here? Well, we're just going to add another reverb and a delay. I'm just going to leave it at default right now. And the delay, which I'm go I am going to turn down a bit, just for the case of it will be overflowing the sound. So obviously there needs to be a little bit tweaking done with the reverb and such. This is just for, for this tip. But the reverb isn't getting crushed by the camel crusher anymore. And that's the sound that you want. Well, that has been my three tips. We are already way over time here. But these were my three tips. I hope they were helpful. They were kind of unconventional. If you don't understand something, please put it in the comment section down below. I will reply to you. Like I said before, before I start raging in the comments. If you like a certain sound, so... I don't care like if you even like the reverb sound like this horrendous sound that I mentioned with the camel crusher on if you want to slap three four five reverbs on there then camel crush it like distorted I don't care if it sounds good to you then you should use it that's always been what I said and this was blue thunder I hope these tips were helpful please like this video please comment on this video and I will see you in the next music music video or tutorial or whatever. Alright, bloed dan eruit.